in Vannet, where you have the cars. Inside the cars, you have. Does anyone have a pointer? Okay, that doesn't mean. I forgot mine. So inside the car you have the OBUs, which are, which are onboard units and which um, uh, uh, carries the information of the car and the ability to talk to RSUs, which are the roadside units, or to talk to the cars itself. So in different ways you can talk to broadcasters, broadcasts around, uh, talking groups of cars or talk to from one car to the other uh, directly. Through the RSUs you can access the internet for uh, services which are stored in, in the cloud, third parties uh, services uh, which would help the cars. So for instance the cars could uh, have information on restaurants, gas stations, hotels and things like that in a manner um, infrastructure via RSUs. Our work, uh, current work, is based on the communication without using the RSUs, uh, but doing opportunistic forwarding of information. For instance, if a hotel wants to make advertisement of its special pack, uh, packages, they can uh, send the information to the cars passing by, the cars will carry this information and eventually will pass the information to other cars and which will then know uh, about that facility. So there are several kinds of communications, uh, uh, vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure, which is the OBU and uh, RSU, or infrastructure to vehicle and many others, vehicle to X, meaning vehicle to anything, yes? Right. So, uh, for those of you who were before here, over there we have a roadside unit for the uh, Glenford Group, uh, the one on the, the, the tower there is a roadside unit, and there is an OBU on the table, right? the two main uh, entities there. <clears throat> okay, so why cars need to communicate? Basically for two reasons, for safety reasons and for non-safe applications. Uh, safety reasons mainly to avoid uh, collision yeah? and, um, and crashes. It seems uh, the, uh, the crashes in the, in the United States cost 300 billion a year. So the idea is to make the, the, the journey of the cars safer by uh, transmitting signals because, I mean, uh, the drivers cannot see what is around him but uh, it can feel, feel the, the signals which comes, the wireless signals which come to, to him or her. So there are a set of um, of uh, uh, functions for the safety reasons, uh, the for the safety uh, functions, and for non-safe application as well, which in which we are talking, we are working, like finding services and infotainment, which is a combination of information and entertainment, making the journeys more uh, pleasant for the the users of the car. Well, the basic thing here is to use, to use beacons. Those devices there use beacon. Why beacon? Because the cars don't have an intercontact time long enough to make the normal thing that the Wi-Fi does, which is to, associate, to look for an antenna, to associate with that, that antenna, to authenticate eventually and to get permission to get an IP number and everything to have permi permission to communicate to, through it. So the intercontact time is very short so uh, we use beacons which is small uh, packets which are broadcasted 
from time to time or by uh, demand and which it is, are used also in Wi-Fi when you come to, to a place, to a hot spot, you take your device, the device will know of the antenna because the antenna sends a beacon, right? So it's broadcast, there's no connection on that. The 3G, 4G works in the same way. So uh, we use these inverters because it provides fast delivery of packets. There are a set of standards, uh, DSRC, DSRC and WAVE is a, is a, a stack of, um, of uh, protocols which have in the bottom the 802.11p. 802.11 is the family of Wi-Fi as known set of uh, protocols which we use in our notebooks and smartphones. So it has been modified and they generate then the P version of this to, in, to uh, provide different uh, functionality, mainly this multi-channel operation and priority. So there is a separation of channels for safety purposes, which are called the control uh, channel, and the channels which are for services. Why? Because uh, beacons means to make uh, broadcasting, and so if everybody does broadcasting, there are collision of packets, so we have to separate the things, separate the, the communication with a safer mode. So that's what uh, 11P does. It uses uh, a high frequency, around 5.9 gigahertz. There, is, there are some differences between the United States and Europe, as in every protocol which you could uh, imagine. And uh, so there are some discussions on how to use this well. Actually, not only in the US and Europe, but also in Japan, Australia, they have different uh, kind of different sets. Anyway, so this is the stack, so I can use TCP IP stack of protocol and build applications straight on top of it um, for when I go through the RSUs, going to the internet, going to the cloud, or I can use this other part in here, in which the application, mainly the safety applications, would go straight to the to the physical, to the Mac, as we say, uh, layers, without using TCP/IP, which means to use internet and connections. Right. So you can write almost directly to your board uh, to avoid uh, all this. Uh, protocols, layers of protocols. So there are uh, lots of standards and this, this standardization going on for every aspect of uh, of uh, of the transportation. Yeah? Uh, for instance, in, from vehicle to infrastructure. So when you the vehicle wants to talk to the infrastructure. There are a set of um, standard from vehicle to vehicle, uh, mainly to avoid collision. Uh, from center to the field, communication the center to the field, monitoring center uh, to the field, or center to centers because the center will centers will cooperate to each other, and so on and so forth. Up forth. And also inside the vehicle, many of um, many protocols. So uh, we are interested in non-safety applications, uh, in which we 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 took, take the scenario of the intelligent transportation system, and this system is thought to make life of tra uh, transportation better. So uh, you can, for instance, look for repair, 
uh, be aware of traffic jam, jams, find services, or cooperate in what uh, now one calls uh, crowd sensing, uh, which is a network of sensors which are not deployed as sensors but using the capability, the sensing capability of the devices we have. So we all can cooperate and create uh, information, for instance, on, on traffic jams or things like that, and transmit this to a monitor. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about this experiment. The first one is a platform to test communication. We call it v, uh, v, uh, v beacon, the big vehicle beacon. Uh, so this device can be used either R, as RSU or UBU. So it can be the device on the, the side of the, the, the road or in the car. Uh, we validate the, the devices through measurements to see if the, the transmissions were dealing the way we wanted or expected. Uh, and we use this, the, the devices to experiment several different protocols, many protocols to do advert of services, um, roadside services. Uh, so this uh, is uh, a system built uh, with an API for the application, so you can build the applications in here. And as it, uh, it uh, sends the packet, kind of raw packet, uh, to the interface, it inserts the position, eventually encrypts the data, build the beacon and sends. Uh, in the reception uh, side, it uh, grabs the package using PCAP, it's a library uh, which use the interface in the promiscuous mode so it can get all the packets and then filter them. Uh, unpack the beacon, uh, do the decryption, insert them a timestamp position, speed, and the strength of signal, and send to the application. So the, the beacon, when it goes, the, the system inserts the position. When it arrives, the system uh, inserts time, position, speed. <coughs> And this, uh, the, the strength of the signal, the RSI, R, uh, RSSI, which shows uh, how far that, um, how good that signal is, and therefore how far it might be from the point where it would uh, be sent. So the setup is like this. Uh, is, is, as I said, the same either in the car, so here is the antenna and the system is there, here is the antenna, this, this is just the antenna and uh, a device, a um, uh, magnetic device to, to glue there, so this is Wi-Fi antenna, and this is the GPS. Here we have the, the main system, which uh, um, which is based in a CPU and is a Linux system, a battery, and a POE, uh, which is a device to make uh, this, this device being um, energized, powered by the Ethernet interface. So it's basically this. So we use this board, Alix 3D2, with these characteristics, so it doesn't matter much. And uh, we use the, the OpenWRT, it's a package uh, free for a router, so you could even put this software in some routers which are available in the market. Uh, and this is the GPS and the Antenna working at uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, but we used here not 11 um, uh, P but 11 A, which also used the band at 5 uh, near 5.8 gigahertz. 
and but, but um, battery and the other parts. Right. So we did uh, pack delivery analysis of the two cars uh, running in this track. This is inside the campus in a very controlled way. Um, they ran 16 minutes and made 9 kilometers total, transmitting beacons to each other. So each one received near 4,000 beacons. Um, the analysis we did was on CTF, CTF's cumulative distribution functions, which shows what was expected to, meaning that um, most of the packages were received within the 200 meters uh, of distance, which were expected by the power which had been set up in the antennas. And uh, so two tests were made, one vehicle to vehicle, and the other one was with one of them stopped, or one tower uh, with the, the devices. Uh, so this is in terms of distance, this is in terms of speed, this is interesting um, because then we can see that the most of packets were received between 20 and 40 kilometers per hour, which were expected because if you are uh, in a very uh, low uh, speed you have a uh, 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 a lot of var var variants of the data, so it had they, they are they are they being discharged. Yeah? So most of the, the the data were received between 20 and 40 kilometers per hour. Why not more than 40 as well? Because this technology, differently from 11P, is made for for uh, walking speed kind of environment, not uh, so 230, 40 kilometers per hour. And uh, the PTR is packed delivery rate ratios, uh, uh, showing that um, uh, the, most of the packets were received in this area where, uh, as expected as well. So the second uh, experiment were made to test the capacity of uh, sending uh, advertisement to the cars passing by and the cars carrying this for some time to pass to others. So the idea is that, for instance, you identify a, a hotel of a gas station by a packet which a car coming in the other way brings to you. He, the car received there and after 50 kilometers or so it passes to you so you can know that uh, there is a hotel or a gas station which is the prices of there if they have promotions and things like that. So we use the RSUs uh, uh, several RSUs, actually we built five of those uh, RSUs. Well, these kind of things today are done by several uh, applications. Uh, Google has applications and uh, there are very popular applications which uh, provide you with this kind of information in the roadside, but you need to be connected. So the idea is to use uh, without connection. So it's beacon based uh, and um, as I said independent of the, the connection. So this scenario is like that, you have uh, books, book store, uh, store shoppings, uh, hotels, etc. and passes information around. Uh, it is, this is what we call opportunistic service. Um, in which uh, uh, the, the cars 
by the, the encounter, opportunistic encounter, change, uh, exchange data. There are three kinds of, um, of packets, which is, which is uh, the message which comes to, to the OBUs from the RSUs, a carry, which is from vehicle to vehicle, so a, um, a vehicle carrying the cash of other cars for a service, and are the reply uh, messages. We used uh, XML data, which makes the, 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 the packet, packets a bit uh, bigger than we want it to be, but they are generic enough, and uh, so we decided to, to make it this way. This is how uh, uh, a packet um, looks like. There is a, the name of the packet, the, of the entity, the position, and then the description of the service. It works in three phases. First, in which the RSU sends the beacons to the cars passing by. Uh, the second is the cars uh, carrying the beacons, so the caching phase, and the carry phase is when one car asks the other. Um, so it is carried in the frame body of, um, of a beacon frame uh, in, with one or more fields with, that is standardized as being uh, the IE vendor. There are some reasons for that. So this is the first uh, evaluation uh, with um, five RSUs and the cars passing by in different uh, speed. And what we did here is, uh, depending on the amount of messages which are sent, varying from one to seven, which is the intercontact time needed to catch them all, right? So here it's saying that uh, uh, if I, we have seven, we need one dot two seconds to catch uh, all the packages. In one dot two seconds, a car running at 80 kilometers per hour will do something like 25 meters. The other evaluation is V to V, in which the cars carry each other. And uh, so it shows that, uh, uh, of course, as many uh, <coughs> cars we have, the success rate drops. So with the seven cars inquiring each other, we have a success rate of um, near 60%. We are doing uh, some work to see in this um, kind of distribu distribution uh, the chances that you have in a certain amount of time, a certain length of the, the road, the chance to get one of the advertisements. That's, because that's all you need. Huh? You don't need to have 60% or 90% uh, uh, we need to have one. You know? The car needs to have one package to get to that, uh, that service. You know? So this is interesting and um, allows for many kinds of different um, business models in which you can um, give incentives for the carrier of the adverts. Like oh, if you stay for that much of time with my packet, I will give you that kind of discount. If you carry it for more time, you have more. Because obviously, obviously you have to get rid of this packet at some time. So how to, to, to discharge this package uh, in a um, structured way? Well, the, the third experiment is uh, um, a work in progress. Uh, it's what we are doing with um, King's 
College with Nishan Sastri at King's College. The point is that uh, we have some experience, experience on dealing with packets, packet, transmitting between cars and things like that, forwarding, and we wanted to join with his ability of, uh, of analyze social net information from this social nets which we know, like uh, Facebook, Forth, Forth, Foursquare, Twitter, etc. And why this? To see which, instead of just putting the, the, putting the packets to everybody, doing a broadcast per se, you could choose some of these carriers which would be more uh, eligible to hand in the package wherever you wanted to, to go. Say you have, uh, uh, for instance, a sense crowding. Right? You you sensing a, a traffic jam, and you want this to be going to the monitoring uh, central uh, system, and you don't have connectivity. So how to pass through every car? Without uh, doing uh, what they say, um, uh, floodings of the packages, which is going to be uh, very dangerous, huh? because if you have so many people exchanging packages in broadcast ways, like uh, you're losing most of them. So you have to choose with a kind of uh, intelligence how to to route this package. And we want to route them by social net inf information, like uh, centrality to see certain characteristics. If this node is a central node in that social net, or the affinity that you have with that carrier, of, or if the car that the carrier has with the receiver one, or even with the popularity of the carrier. Because if it is popular, the chances of the package arriving the, the, uh, the destiny, destination is higher. So it's like a PSN for those of you which know, uh, is a, are aware of pocket switching networks, uh, but using humans, social nets of humans and social nets cars. So these are two entities because I mean one thing is is you being part of a social net and the other thing is the car which can also be part of a net. Uh, you can uh, um, classify the cars in categories like uh, the buses, the, the taxis, the, the cars, uh, the common cars, the trucks, and each one of these will have also certain behavior um, on their displacement. And this behavior can be uh, taken into account when they, they carry the information. So it can be used on improving crowd sensing, uh, for finding services like uh, the, the service we just described, or uh, choosing point of interests, uh, but based on affinity. So it's not just uh, you know that there is an event or a hotel or whatever, but your friends are also interested on that event or that hotel or that restaurant. So uh, uh, if you know who likes that, you probably would like more. Uh, we're using a um, data set from Texas A&M uh, University. This has been taken from Twitter plus four square. So it's, it's Twitter uh, logs. But the Twitter logs have been filtered for the ones which has been also users of of Foursquare, so like I mean you can 
get uh, into one service using the authentication from your other service. So you can't get to Foursquare being a user of Twitter without making another kind of application there. So between the, uh, the logins from Twitter from four months was taking out 25 million logins, which has these characteristics, which have uh, uh, people from Twitter and Foursquare. And the check-in provides this tupla with user ID, tweet ID, a text, which is a text for, for Twitter, location, time, and venue. And you can see here in this example which this, this user is also user of uh, Foursquare and there is a link for Foursquare. And in parallel there is also uh, uh, data uh, indexed by user ID, so this is indexed, is connected to this one, which has the popularity of, uh, of that. Twitter use user, but only based in followers and followings. Uh, usually it's easy to get information from, uh, from Facebook and things like that, but not that much from Twitter. Yeah? So Twitter you can have only this, but um, it's not much. So what we're doing, we're trying to manipulate this, this data looking for some parameters which would help the, uh, our routing. For instance, this is the density in Washington, so uh, uh, these lines show the amount of, um, of um, check-ins which we have per uh, area. And these are just colored for London near the Kings, by the way, we just uh, got from that, um, from that data set the ones which were near the Kings, and here uh, this is a hot point with 1,000 check ins. And so uh, there are people uh, using this to, to drive uh, uh, businesses. So if you want to do a shop, a coffee shop, they can look at these maps and say, well, at that point there is that many people going there and the profile of these people are this and that. So it can drive um, the, <coughs> the clients. This is one, which, one uh, parameter which is going to be very interesting. It's the, 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 um, the ratios of gyration. Is it gyration? Gyration or gyration? Gyration. Gyration, yeah. And that shows how frequently and how far a user goes. Because four squares is based in check-ins. I should have said that because it seems four squares is not that common in the UK. Yeah. So, is it? Uh, yeah. So, with this uh, funny application, you can uh, check in where you go. So now you go to, you are in Middlesex University, so you go there and just say, now, this hour, this time, I am in this position, and this, what happening here? Well, I am in an event, a uh, talk from Exxon Moreira. So you check in your activities throughout the day, and, um, uh, so uh, what this shows is the how far each user goes. Now it, this has been done for four, around 400 users, and the, it's not in uh, with the real dimension, but it is on scale. So this 